So before we tell you um, what we're doing, let me ask you a question. What do you teach? It's thermodynamics? Circuits? Mechanics? Very good. Biomaterials? Senior design? Oh, OK, good. Anyone we left out? <laughs> OK, fine. So even though we're all covering a lot of different topics, there's one thing we all have in common, and that is that we teach students. And we had great examples uh, yesterday morning, of course, thanks to Dan, quotes, comedian Moat, of how there's <laughs> such amazing spirit coming from the community, from ninth graders, leading into the freshman year. And there's so many examples across our institutions of building great bridges into our collegiate system. Then that there's the sophomore and junior valley of death in which we give students foundation after foundation after foundation. And that spirit turns to dispirit, and that connection turns into disconnection. And so the challenge we identified was how can we build mechanisms that are truly pervasive to meaningfully build orthogonal to that? We're not going to change all of those foundations, but how can we put energies into the system through which students can truly connect with all of that whole spirit, whole energy that they come into the major with, rather than actively dissuading them from connecting to that through those second and third years. So here is our affinity that we want to foster this relevance, the connection, and the identity throughout engineering education. And so there are these parts that we'll talk about now. But for us, it really is all about valuing the holistic person and the holistic engineer. And of course, the NSF, I-U-S-E-R-E-D, wants us to focus on that as well. And per many other uh, N-A-E, et cetera, publications, all wanting us to care about that, but how to actually implement that in our systems when we have so many foundational requirements is challenging. So these are six puzzle pieces representing the six programs that we are each here talking about at our own institutions. I'll start first because I have the lectern. And so I'm still Kurt Thurum and I'm still at WashU in St. Louis. And the forest for the trees problem is the one that I try to directly address by building a light online but persistent intervention throughout the first four semesters. And for us, that culminates in the fourth semester with students having notions about how all of this will fit together to them in terms of the individual pieces building a cohesive scholastic whole, and then that segueing into pre-professionalism. So have them building those ideas as freshmen and sophomores. And then at the end of the sophomore year, each student in my biomedical engineering program has to identify a real world mentor that will check and balance those hypotheses and help them with very concrete next steps. Another important part of this model is connectivity in pulling it bringing the students in to realize that you know they're not just an engineer they have to learn math they have to understand it within a real world context for applications in engineering as well as you know pulling in science also from a real world perspective like our first group just presented on and how all of that kind of culminates together to build the whole engineer the complete engineer who's adaptable who has a toolkit that allows them to be effective at whatever problem they are facing when they get into industry. And so the final piece, we talk about identity and mentoring and other programs can help that, or connectivity. But then there's also relevance and letting the students see how what they're learning is relevant to their day-to-day -day lives. So Tillman's work in problem-based learning, um, my work in everyday examples in engineering, the research shows that if you can link what your students are learning to something they are already familiar with, they will be less intimidated by it, they typically will learn it better, they will be more interested in the material and their retention will improve. So the real key of always making what we're doing relevant to our students' personal experience, not our own, which is what, I've, what we've been trying to do with the everyday examples. So that's three examples. 
And overall, we think that, and again, we have very strong evidence from all of these, for that matter, cycles of decades and decades of work that all of these elements are not contradictory. They're all supporting the whole person that we aspire to build to go out and have real influence toward the grand challenges and toward all of the rest of what we aspire our engineers to do. So this is really central to all of us in our works. And so it was a challenge that FOEE gave to us about how this will live on beyond the effervescence of all being here uh, at Dan's house. So there are two things we're doing. One is we have a group actually on the page now. And so we please ask all of you to share what's really going well and what's really failing spectacularly at your places. And let's just use that safe space of logged in and you can share there to talk about this and figure out how we can have institutional best practices either to mimic or to use as counterexamples. Secondly, though, um, as Dan mentioned, NAE has strong ability to convene and to promote. And so this is really a challenge to NAE and to all of us in this community. How do we raise the level of conversation and consideration here? To not think of personal relevance and real world connection as somehow being talc E, and the things we do in the classroom is diamond E, but that all of it is holistic. And all of it is very central to how they should have impact later on, but also how they should contextualize everything throughout the engineering education experience. Thanks, everyone.